Hello. We're back. Yeah, we're um, on. I'm actually, hold on, I'm actually going to put my... I got the die. Get the fuck out of there. Welcome back, Cherry Blossom. All right, can you hear me? Yo, yo. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Excellent. So, okay. All right. um, can, so I, can I actually give you a little... Yeah, let me give you a little more context again, like, because I feel like... Um, I don't know. I feel like, in, in a way... Uh, uh, the discussion has been focused on on an aspect of of of, uh, uh, of the scenario here that, in my opinion, is just kind of beside the point. Like, and, which and is that? Which is that? You know, the the Washington Post was was whether they were right or wrong to fact check the meme. It, you know, it really doesn't matter to me. This is about um, throwing someone under the bus not having not approaching them in a civil manner to give them an opportunity to explain themselves or to or to give them an opportunity to learn right to to tell them hey you know this this offended me here's why um maybe would you consider taking it down or or you know what i mean like there's to, in my opinion there were just so many better ways to approach it so i'm just looking to see who who's jumping in here yeah um and and especially considering here's the other thing, Daktar is in something like the top five or ten genius users of all time in terms of his mm -hmm. IQ accumulation. So mm -hmm. the work that he's done on site is um, undeniably uh, 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 what's the word prolific. And, yeah, yeah. And so it's like, look, man, like I get it. We don't we don't like Trump. Like you know, ninety percent of us on the site are probably liberal or left-leaning whatever but at the end of the day oh you know what this is the other thing i wanted to i wanted to discuss i'm glad that we're doing round two that we have time for this because this this situation started reminding me of the situation with uh uh richard neal and uh morse right from massachusetts did you did you hear about this richard neal and morse so I'm there was, yeah, i don't think i'm familiar with that they they were running for a house seat in Massachusetts, and Richard Neal was the incumbent, and mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to remember the guy's name. I think Alex Morse. Yes, Alex Morse. I think it's Alex. Let me look it up real fast. Oh, wait, you have. I, I was like, "Where's uh, my yeah, phone?" Yeah, I can get on my computer. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Where's my phone? phone? Let me look this up." But I'm staring into it. Um, so basically, what happened was, and uh -oh. Kyle Kalinsky covered this on Secular Talk uh, uh, a few times. He actually did videos about this. Um, the Sunrise Movement and the Justice Democrats. Were oh yes, in, actually, I, I I remember this. Yeah, so they endor they had endorsed Alex Morse to unseat mm -hmm. Richard Neal, who was sort of like a corporate Democrat, or who was described that way. I don't really know yeah. much about either of their their beliefs, other than that Alex Morse is a, a gay man. Mm -hmm. He was the mayor. Um, he apparently had like a, prof a, a professorial role at one of the colleges there. And what yes. happened was for for and for anyone who doesn't know, because it sounds like you remember now. Mm -hmm. For those who don't know, what what essentially happened was um, uh, there was like a smear campaign against Morse, where they were kind of entrapping him on these like um, these LGBT dating apps and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. um, Alex Morse, as a gay man, was being approached, um, in, you know, pri in in a private way by people who were essentially trying to uh, fabricate these these stories about him um, being like a sexual predator. And then um, it, it was exposed later on in in multiple ways and in undeniable, uh, undeniable, there was undeniable evidence that it was a smear campaign, that it was all mm -hmm. being orchestrated against him on behalf of Richard Neal or by people who supported Richard Neal Right. It, it it got so bad that the Sunrise Movement, they unendorsed Morse at mm -hmm. one point, and then it took them a long time to re-endorse him. So luckily they did kind of get it right, but by then it was too late, and he lost. Yeah. He lost that election by like seventeen points or something. Right. And I mean, it's pretty clear why. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, he was essentially blameless. Now, obviously, this is not the same thing, but 
but where I drew parallels or where I could see parallels was in, in that, um, and this is, this is a point that Kyle Klinsky made, so I'm not gonna try to take credit for it, but the way Kyle Klinsky put it was, um, you know, we as, as left-leaning or, or progressive uh, uh, social Democrats, whatever you wanna call it, we shouldn't be uh, biting the hand that, that feeds us or, or, or throwing our own people under the bus on, on baseless accusations, right? Because you know, b besides the fact that it's just wrong in and of itself, um, he was basically making the point that this whole cancel culture thing, it's really easy to take it too far. And, and when, when, when it's easy to rile a certain base up on, mm -hmm. on whatever it may be, on, on, you know, in this case, it was, it was sexual predation, right? Mm -hmm. So when it's easy to do that, it's also easy for evil people to do it against you, to, to use it against you. Now, um, how but they already do, the, the, the thing is to me, this is kind of like the, um, the reason why I don't buy this. And this is one thing, um, you know, this, I guess this is the thing that I, that I, again, that I, I disagree with is that like, yeah, was this, a, was this particular instance a bad call? Yes. Just like, I believe that the Al Franken one, was a trumped up, you know, saying bullshit mm. one. Um, mm -hmm. But the thing is to me, that doesn't mean like, oh, cancel culture needs to be stopped and shit because the reason why cancel culture yeah. even started, well, the reason why cancel culture even started is because the the institutions and shit like the media, the newspapers and everything um, and the auditors and the government and everything, we're not doing what the fuck they were supposed to be doing or regulations have been cut back. So they weren't able to focus on stuff. So yeah, this is the way. And, and, so, so, well, hold on, well, hold on. I'm trying to, I'm trying to. Okay, okay, okay. De defend I thought my there point. was a pause so, there. My bad. So the thing is, is that like while the thing is, we got to look at each case on its own. And yeah, they shouldn't have jumped on this Alex Morris one with all this, you know, uh, you know, trumped up, you know, shit, right? Same thing with the Al Franken one. Um, mm -hmm. And as I said, yeah, I understand that. Like, yeah, there could have been different ways to approach the person. Um, Are we talking about Dactar now? Right, so now I'm going into to okay, Daktar okay, okay. again, right? So the thing is that, or, 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 really, just any, or, or really just anybody, right? <laughs> okay. Really just anybody, right? Now, the thing is, is that, like, I'll use myself for an example. If somebody were to go on any of my pages, right? Excuse mm -hmm. me. What's going on, everybody who's joining in? Um, for some, if somebody were to go in and look at my, um, any of social my pages, media. any of my social media, right? Um, you're going to have to... You, you can, you know, clip shit and be like, oh, he's a, he's a commie, he's a, a socialist, he's a social justice <laughs> warrior, he's a, you know, left, blah, 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 right? And that yeah. is something that I've already accepted. And <laughs> there have been, and the, and the thing is, is that, like, I, I make it clear, you know, saying all the time that I am making um, an opinion, that I am um, ex expressing stuff the way that I see it, and... I make a I make a um, purposeful effort to not share misinformation or to correct stuff or to make sure at the end of the day, no matter how lighthearted or absurd or non secular or whatever the fuck, that yeah, I, I'll be critical all day, but I try not to spread misinformation. I try not to spread hate speech, and I always try to make sure if something if something untrue is being presented that it is being criticized and shown why it is wrong at the same mm -hmm. time. And that yeah. isn't just, and that isn't just, and that's, you know, not, that's not just the sense of me like, oh, doing the right thing. It's, it's me as a consumer of art and as an artist and as a creator, understanding that everybody is at, everybody's at different stages in the development and understanding of shit. And so, mm -hmm. um, there is always the chance of somebody looking at satire and seeing it as not as criticism of a thing, but as endorsement of a thing. Right. And, and that doesn't mean, of course, that everybody has to go around being squeaky clean and can't, you know, say shit. But it's just like when it comes to certain kinds of information and certain kinds of messaging, you know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. Some stuff deserves more attention than others. Now, you know, actually concerning, you know, when somebody posts this stuff, is it good to go, you know, go and check their profile and stuff? It's like, look, again, you know, that, that's the risk that we, you know, we take with all that. I'm, I'm fairly neutral on that shit because of, you know, it, it's like you have to look at the environment and be like, okay, if, so, if, if high-end celebrities and politicians and ambassadors 
very super fucking important people can get doxxed and have their shit cracked. There's really no reasonable expectation for any of us to think that our shit can't get cracked. You know what mm. I'm saying? Um, mm. So it's like in that respect, I'm, I'm neutral on that. And again, it's like when somebody, you know, it'd be one thing if he posted that thing and it's, and it's like it's rare within his stream of whatever. But after a mm. while, when you see somebody posting stuff on their personal page, right, on their private page, you know, mm. it's, it's kind of hard not to take it at face value. Like, oh, this is a, this is a stream of, of his consciousness or the stuff that, you know, uh, he's indulging. You know, yeah. um, it I doesn't sound it, it, it doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like from what you've said the context that you provided is that mm -hmm. he's he's not doing it to make a critique himself of the information he's critiquing the other people who are critiquing him being like oh why are you doing this it's like that's deflection that's deflecting from the point that you're spreading this information and if you're not gonna directly check it then who the fuck then who the fuck will. You know, and it's deflecting to try to just say that all oh, the people criticizing it are taking it out of hand. Um, when we know that this kind of information, you said that this was spread two months ago, um, that this was posted two months ago. We've mm -hmm. had several months, you know, of the impact of coronavirus and the increase in hate violence, um, not just including Asian people, um, but in general and all the political violence and unrest and shit. And to post that again, you know, it, 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 I either have to take it at face value that this is, that this is just another, you know, um, point in the stream of your consciousness and what you actually think and believe, no matter how misguided it may be or what circumstances, or that you aren't adequately able to identify the problems of this shit. And instead of actually taking that opportunity to, um, to reflect on the shit or to learn more about it, you just instead go, oh, why am I being criticized? You know, it's 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 deflecting by saying that the scrutiny is more by saying, oh, the scrutiny is absurd without dealing with the actual information, the consequences of that information. You know. Yeah. Okay. So so I, um I think we both agree that it was somewhat irresponsible for him to share something like that and to share other similar things. Right now, we obviously both. Again, we're left leaning. We obviously don't like Trump. We we think that he's full of shit, and a lot of the stuff that he's done is damaging and destructive, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But this all comes down to, in my opinion, two things. One, the the subject, the header on, or the the topic of the of the thread, which is there is a racist moderator. Daktar is racist. And mm -hmm. two, what are we going to do about that? So yeah, now, um. It, to a certain extent, it was implied that the the post implied like to like remove him from his role or remove him from the site or to have staff like reprimand him. I don't know what, but um, the reprimand thing is one thing, right? You can you can go to constructively criticize someone's behavior or action in hopes mm -hmm. that they will learn, in hopes that they can improve, in hopes that they will change or grow, but mm -hmm. you know. This whole, and again, like, actually, I wanted to, I, this reminds me of something I was, I was going to say earlier about cancel culture, because you're saying mm -hmm. you're kind of neutral on it in the sense that like, well, you know, there's two sides to every story, or if you're, if you're posting something, you can't expect not to be, not to face some, some level of scrutiny, right? But, mm -hmm. um, Actually, I love. Actually, I'm actually I'm okay with cancel culture. That doesn't mean it's always going to be correct. You know, just like the yeah. judicial legal system is not 100% correct. I like both. I just see that I yeah, just see cancel. So, I just see cancel culture is making up for the ways in which our uh, legal system, in which our institutions have uh, failed. And so, you know, when people say that, like, um, oh, cancel culture is the problem and shit, it's it's we should also be looking at the actual institutions. And and part of that is the reason why institutions are now doing the fact checking thing on this information um, mm -hmm. because they've come to grips with the consequences of this stuff. Did you see? I haven't even seen it yet, but it's all I've heard you know, people talking about the social dilemma? I haven't seen it either, but I've seen uh, interviews with the person who made it. And yeah, I've seen multiple interviews with him. I don't remember mm -hmm. his name, but um, I, I, I've started it actually a couple times and yeah. either fallen asleep or just uh, gotten distracted and just didn't actually watch it. But yeah, um, I need to I check it. But basically, but basically, I want to say something real fast, yeah. though, because yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. was kind of I was trying to make a uh, not I wasn't even necessarily trying to make a point 
an mm -hmm. overall point, but but I do want to say that like in terms just to 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 be clear about what what I think about cancel culture or whatever mm -hmm. cancel culture um, is essentially that it doesn't exist. Now cancel mm -hmm. uh, cancel culture is just another term for boycotting something or someone, right? right. To say we're not gonna we're not gonna go down that road. We're not gonna buy these products. We're not gonna associate with these people. So right you know, when it comes to you now when it comes to Daktar and canceling him or or mm -hmm. saying you know you can't use the site anymore you can't use it in the capacity Dis that you used to dissociating um, him yeah. yeah i just don't think that's fair and especially more importantly i don't think it's fair to call him a racist now on that point and this is something mm -hmm. another point that i wanted to make and probably one of the most important ones is that we're we're talking about consequences right consequences for our actions Mm -hmm. calling him racist, creating a threat mm -hmm. in a public forum, putting him on blast in front of potentially millions of people at first, and then mm -hmm. it got moved to a semi-public forum, so it's now in front of potentially thousands or I guess tens of thousands, I don't know. But yeah. that is that is also dangerous, right? Because I know yeah. Daktar and I know that he's not racist. Now, he's misguided, he's misinformed, he's in my opinion, he I don't agree with with his political views, but mm -hmm. to to say that he's racist and to put this out there, what if he loses his job, you know? And yeah. this is another thing that I know that these other people didn't know, which is that, uh, well, okay, so so his real name is Justin Conway. Well, I don't so, think you should. I don't think you should say his real. I don't think you should say like his real. Oh, oh my. Well, I already did, but maybe did. we'll censor. Whatever, it doesn't matter. The point is. I was gonna say he's a real human. Well, it's live. Being. I can't censor it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I meant, I meant afterward. Afterward, if if you were gonna save this and repost it, <laughs> regardless, I don't think he gives a shit. Okay, look, he's a, like I said, he's a grown man. But uh, the point I was trying to make is is that he he's a, he's adopted, right? He was adopted as a as a young kid in in t growing yeah. up in Texas. His adopt the person who adopted him him just recently passed away. He's yeah. dealing with a lot of, of personal shit in his personal life. Now that doesn't excuse insensitivity, but um, or his political views, which I disagree with. But my point is, like, yo, we gotta we gotta look at him as a human being, and we can't just say mm -hmm. you're racist and then throw out all these memes and shit that he didn't even really mean or believe in. In you know, you're you're saying that to a certain extent. He probably did believe it, or or he. Or well, no, no. I'm saying what I'm saying. What I'm saying yeah. is that now. I, so I will say this. I will say this that it is, um, you know that 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 one that specific. So that specific meme. I don't know any of the other ones, but that just sticking to this particular meme, I mm -hmm. could just accept that somebody is misguided or is you know caught up in the rapture of of Trumpism and MAGA and all that stuff. But they could, yeah. you know, come maybe they could you know come out of it. Um, you know, or somebody could just be saying, you know, uh, spreading, you know, spreading this, um, um, you know, for another reason that doesn't have to do with uh, a reflection of who they are. Um, and so I do. And so I would say that I think that, you know, when we just jump out and just say, you know, in this circumstance, oh, somebody is racist and, you know, you know, make those huge things. It's like that's that's um, that doesn't cross the threshold um, for for doing that. Like, you know, I'm not against that again? I'm not, so I'm not against the idea of making a thread about in this vein, but given given what you given what I know, what you what you told me thus thus far, I don't feel confident. I don't feel right in making that association with this person because, to saying my knowledge, that he's racist? I, saying that he's racist because I to me that yeah. doesn't pass the that doesn't meet the the threshold, you know, yeah. for racism. It doesn't fall um, under the the definition of racism. Yeah. I mean, yes. That now it well it doesn't necessarily do that. It depends on again. Yeah. This is you know this is where you know how does somebody respond to information, respond to memes, respond to jokes. Somebody will look at that and just be like, oh, it's absurd. And some people look at that and take it at face value. Pose law, and yeah, you know, and we've and we've seen the ramifications of that, right? So it's like, so the thing is where I would go with that is that I wouldn't have made this massive thread um unless i unless you know i i saw something that i think met the threshold of racism in my mind right yeah um you know otherwise i would go to him and be like hey do you understand why people are reacting this way and why there's a you know why of all memes that there are certain kinds of memes that get the fact check shit and not other ones and and you know what the difference yeah. between satire and parody you know i basically i would go through i would go with you know through them on that and then given their response you know, seeing see how to go from there. Um, 
mm -hmm. it's like no i mean you know i do i do understand and empathize with like oh people just you know going going too far with these accusations and um you know it's like i don't know what other people i've seen i don't i haven't seen the other posts um you know maybe there is something there that passes that threshold but given what i know right now that doesn't pass the threshold of, of racism for me i went um, through and i looked at some of his like let's say the last like 20 or so of his posts yeah um i didn't find anything that was super overtly offensive or racist or yeah. you know anything like that but that that's it's just not about opinion. the overt well, it's not about the it's again this isn't about the overt shit and this is the thing about the okay, whole meme. this and it, okay. this is the thing because this is the whole thing about yeah. the whole meme this is about the whole meme culture and this is why i want to go back to the social dilemma so mm, okay social media obviously has helped facilitate the exchange of information across you know whatever fucking topic somebody wants right a big component yeah. of that has been memes now a meme is not necessarily a joke or has to be comedic or humorous a meme is just about conveying information um, through a very sparse or a very small set of, you know, images and text usually. Yeah. Um, you know, with, with, you know, obviously infinite, you know, uh, variations, but that's the whole point. Hey, what's going on, y'all? Thanks for joining in. We're talking about, um, amongst other things, we're talking about political correctness, cancel culture, uh, social justice, or oh, I said that already, um, uh, political correctness, or maybe I think I just said it because they rhyme. But anyway, <laughs> we're talking yeah. we're talking about various topics, subjects of the of the of the culture today, right? And so, um, <clears throat> and this is go back to like the social media and everything, and memes, right? Because you can communicate any sort of set of information, and the thing about that, that about it is that like one of the groups or and ideas and ideologies and shit that we've seen become prominent over over the years, and especially under Trump, but but also under Obama. Uh, was the rise of white identity extremism, you know, white nationalists, white supremacists, um, militia groups, you know, what I'm saying the uh, the reemergence of extreme um, of um, extreme right wing pr uh, Christianity, um, you know, religious fundamentalists, you know, essentially, yeah, and um, and and just anti liberalism in general, right? And yeah. one of the ways in which one of the techniques that has been used and that has been openly recognized by like the likes of Milo Giannopoulos, Richard Spencer, um, different very, you know, parts of the intellectual dark web is through memes. You yeah. know, this is this is, you know, this is widely recognized. And so the thing in the social dilemma, as I understand it, because I still I haven't seen it yet, is that mm -hmm. these guys or excuse, I shouldn't just say guys, but these founders of these social media companies and everything. It's like, yeah, sure, they were, you know, you know, trying to get rich or whatever and, and you know, fulfill other, you know, dreams and everything. But they did yeah. not comprehend, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the, the extent of what the hell they had just unleashed on the world. Yeah. Um, the, because they, they didn't realize how much they really tore down the barriers of communication and expression. And, you know, made it to where, I mean, there, were, there was everything, you know, so many heads of rolled literally and figuratively from the ability of people to be able to talk on different social media shit and apps and stuff and overthrow governments, you know, saying topple, you know, longstanding cultural political figures, yeah. um, all kinds of shit, have huge cultural and, and, and um, um, technological geopolitical development, implications. You know, ge ge geopolitical implications, um, shit that would, that normally took centuries or decades in a matter of weeks and months, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, it's like, what, so whatever you, so what, so however one feels about it and be like, oh, I wish we could just take Twitter back to, you know, before when it was just about memes and bullshit and shit. It's like, we can't <laughs> because it, because what it has Pandora's become is what, be, because what it has become is what it was always going to be. It's just that the people who were on it at first, like the comedians and the absurdists and people who were just dark, you know, and shit like that, they did not take into account, like a lot of people took into account that they would be replaced by um, other overriding ideologies. They thought that they were going to be the big ones, and they thought that they they basically thought this land is our land. This, uh, well, actually, that well, actually, that's like a socialist song because they say like, oh, this land is your wow. land. This land is for all of us. That's actually a oh. socialist song. That's actually a communist song. Really? Um, yeah, it's a yeah communist American folk song. Um, no way. Oh yeah, it's um. That's they didn't hilarious. teach you. They didn't teach us. They didn't teach. They didn't teach that when they was uh, learning us that in school. Uh, I had to learn yeah. that shit as an adult. Um, in any case, getting back to the point, 
is yeah. anybody with a lick of common sense recognizes the ramifications of this shit. But these motherfuckers in their elite bubbles didn't quite get it because they kind of assumed that everybody was at the same level as them. They assumed that everybody had a general, was close to their level of education, their level of cultural exposure, their level of critical thinking, their level of liberalism, you know? Um, they, didn't, they did not anticipate the rise of these white identity extremists. And they did not uh, anticipate the, that not only would memes be used to convey absurdism and dark humor and shit, but that it would also be used as coding to help yeah. facilitate, um, uh, um, you know, very reactionary ideas. And this doesn't just belong to white extremists. Um, mm, yeah. You know, that's just that's just related to, you know, like Trump and, and, and everything. Um, as a matter of fact, have you seen a comic? Have you ever seen a comic strip by an artist uh, known as Stone Toss? Does that sound familiar sounds to you? Familiar. Yeah, it sounds familiar. So, but so I posted one of his comics that he does. He's a he's basically a right wing. He's basically a far. He basically he's basically a not, right? Um, and, and 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 the thing is, like, the reason why I feel confident in saying that is because of the consistency of how he expresses his views, and even in other ones where he kind of drops the mask and says stuff in a much more um, uh, blunt manner than I think he or they, you know, uh, intended. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Wait, is it on this page? Um, I think I got the main one. But but basically what it is, um, it's two panel, right? And one shows then and now. So like sometime in the past and then, you know, another time in the present. Ah, here it is. On the left in the then one, it says, I'm a homosexual, right? And it said, and it's some boy saying that right to his parents and his parents looking disappointed. So, right, so we're talking about the past when homosexuality was less uh, normalized and less accepted, right? Right. And that's, why this, and that's why the boy is saying it and he's looking dejected and his, fam his parents are dejecting him, right? Now, the kid now in the now panel, Mm. everything is the same except now the boy is saying i'm homophobic mm. as in the tide has changed to now if you say that if you express any type of homophobic ideas yeah. um you will then be rejected then you're looked down upon oh yeah and add yeah. to this he's he's wearing a hoodie in the in the right in the left panel they're just wearing like um shirt and shorts and sandals and then in the right in the now one they're wearing a hoodie with a minecraft axe on it do you know what that indication the is? The game, oh, the game Minecraft. It has a mine. It has a uh, one of the axes or pickaxe or something from the game Minecraft. Mm -hmm. It's done in that art style, right? Do you know what the implication of that is? I don't know, fucking communism or some shit. No. So the dude. <laughs> no. So the dude. So the dude who made the game Minecraft uh, um, later on became an out and out Trump supporter and started oh. you know and and started expressing a lot of far right you know sentiments and everything and people did not know this before right he basically right. showed that he was a right of you know a white identity extremist right and okay. um and everything right and so basically and if you look at this other dude's comics and everything and the association being made here is that he is lamenting at the fact that yeah. it is considered yeah. bad to be homophobic sure these days right yeah um he so I mean and and that's why there's even a um yeah so the, so the point I'm trying to make here is I don't want to labor that too much mm -hmm. is that that's like a more blatant example but other ones are more coded than that but this is exactly what they do this is exactly right. how this shit is used and so when somebody is right. consistently you know and the thing is when we know nothing else about a person then we, the thing is we all make associations with people based off of everything you know what I'm saying like it's it's you know. You know, to me, it isn't about the fact that we give labels. To me, it's about what labels do we give to people and do we second guess them, you know, or do we just go with the first one on our minds? Like, I don't, you know, it's, 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 it's to me, the issue is not so much about people making assumptions about how dig, did you dig, so how deep did striker. you actually dig? Yeah. I want to say what's everybody up to Void Striker there. real fast, because Void Striker's the yeah. man. He's a, he's like a Grammy nominated or award-winning producer. So welcome to the show, Okay, man. thanks. Thanks for joining actually, in, dude. We're talking funny. about cancel culture. And, yeah. yeah. We're talking about genius. And actually, I just did um, his genius page for him instead. We're, we're still going to do some more stuff on there for his for his material. But uh, everybody, real fast, just an aside, go check out Void Striker. Go check out his single. It's called Wild West. 
And actually, what's pretty funny is I was playing I was playing his song while I was uh, mm -hmm. working on the on the transcription page for it on Genius, and okay. uh, my girl my girlfriend goes, "Why are you listening to Drake?" Because she knows that I don't really like Drake, but uh, <laughs> but it was in a way it was a compliment because she, basically she's saying, "Hey, it sounds like you're listening to some like really polished like hip hop yeah. pop kind of you know what I mean." Mm -hmm. So. And that was a major compliment, in my opinion. Even though I personally don't like Drake as an artist, yeah. um, but the singer, the singer on the song, obviously had really, really good um, vocals. Speaking of vocals, what's up, KD? Just joined us. Yeah. Miss Unrock yeah, Devil, another on? another person who is super talented, and we're gonna get on Genius very soon. But let's get back to the discussion that we were having. Uh, um, yeah, you were talking about um, the social dilemma too. We, I feel like we veered off somewhere along the way. Oh yeah, well no, that wasn't veering off. It was I was making the connection of, of, really just kind of reinforcing the fact that, that we can't just always take things. We can't just always expect people to interpret things the way that we do, and that mm -hmm. we all make associations about um, one another. You know what I'm saying? Right. And and to me, I, and to me again, that's not that's not necessarily a good or a bad thing, or like trying to give people labels. Is that that's just how you know, what we are. And sometimes you give a label and it's correct and it's correct. You know what I'm saying? And other times it's less, you know, credible. It's all about how deep and what kind of associations are you, how deep are you digging to make the associations you are? And um, are they, are they making you approach people with uh, uh, a level of, of flexibility? Right. Okay. And so again, like I said, I don't necessarily approve of like making a mega thread and shit and directly with the information that I have thus far, and then calling somebody yeah. a racist. There is, I do have a threshold for that where I do feel comfortable with that, but that didn't need it because I, I'm pretty sure that you saw a post that I made a while ago and I wasn't the one who started this, but I jumped onto it. But basically yeah. there was an artist associated with the Museum of Death. And I don't remember if it was the New Orleans one or the LA one, um, uh -huh. but there is a Museum of Death that's all about serial killers and, and famous murders and shit like that. Yeah, I've been by that before, and, the one in LA. Yeah, and uh, I've only been to the one in New Orleans when I was there on vacation a couple of years ago. Oh, dope. And um, uh, just, yeah, and um, what was I trying to say? Oh, so anyway, and there was an artist that was discovered that, was, that made some of their art, some of their merchandise yeah. art, who was discovered to be a white nationalist, like unquestionably. Like they were very bold in their opinion and shit and they've been unearthed. To me, that was fine. And I, you know, played my part in sharing those same posts and tagging them and everything. Um, and then they, you know, disassociated with them. Uh, with that wow. artist for that and wow. to me that was and to me that you know because it met the threshold um yeah you know for that shit i do feel that people who hold those sentiments um uh, if they profess them that strongly and you know it and, and really it should be on them at a certain point to be like hey i want to change my views um i'm I, you know because yeah. i'm not gonna i'm not gonna take you at face value like oh you didn't know or that you um um you know you just did it for for some other reason especially because this was like a middle-aged man you know this wasn't like a teenager yeah you know, saying who would, you know, was looking for an ideology in their life and shit. Like, this is pretty well established. It's like some people want to hate. Some people want mm -hmm. to have that shit in their heart. And, right. um, you know, so like with social media and memes and stuff like that, does this mean that every meme that somebody shares or every post that somebody shares is in and of itself indicative of who and what they are? No. But when you add, but the thing is, is that like, at what point is enough enough? There's, there's an accumulation, right? It's when you start adding things up and being like, okay, this one is similar to this one, and then it's similar to this one, and it's similar to this one, or like every yeah. other one is different or something, or maybe they're like, like I said before, with the Babylon Bee or the Onion, they specifically, explicitly say that they are satirizing. Yeah. So it's like always give them the benefit of that doubt, even if they do be saying something that may be wrong or, or you know, bad in the uh, whatever the fuck. Yeah. Um, and so the thing is, um, yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that's where I stand with it. You know, there's a to me, there's always there's a threshold. You know, saying for different shit, there's a threshold um, for different stuff. This particular thing didn't arise from it, but you know, but maybe the other people who shared who um, who made this thread and everything, maybe they saw some stuff that I didn't that meets the threshold. I know. For them. Yeah, and to be clear, I know that somebody mentioned something about um, one of something he had, he had shared even further back down his thread, um, I think they said that it used a homophobic um, term or slur or something like that. 
Mm. Now, I I kind of tried to look to find it. The only thing I saw was something like some, I honestly didn't even understand the meme and I don't want to misquote it, but I know that it used the phrase metrosexual in it. <laughs> haven't heard that know. in a minute. Haven't heard that in a minute. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I didn't, I wasn't sure. Is that an offensive <laughs> term now? Or, I thought metrosexual was kind of like another way of calling somebody like preppy, kind of like they, 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 they're interested in fashion right isn't that kind of yeah a well yeah like a yeah like a well-groomed man like a man who, who gets his fashion sense and grooming etiquette from like gq and and the popular like men's magazines and, and yeah and, you know bodybuilding shit somebody a man who cares know. about his a man who cares about his appearance and um doesn't mind like going to the spa and styling his hair and, and really looking good right being fashion yeah so, so yeah I think that might have been said, one of the things but um but i mean regardless it, at the end of the day it's like look Daktar is actually a reasonable person. He's not racist. He's actually, I described him as a total sweetheart in, in one of the comments that I had made in the thread, basically saying like, look, you guys are kind of like, you're demonizing this guy who is otherwise a total sweetheart. And yeah, like it, it really comes down to um, that he's not a racist and that like what kind of consequences do you want here? Because he, mm -hmm. he apologized multiple times. He privatized his page. I think he felt backed up into a corner. And, and as a man, maybe he was like, look, I'm not going to just like remove it. And, and like, I, and maybe in his eyes, it was like, I'm not just going to give in to all of this, like what it, what he sees as unwarranted scrutiny regarding the meme, that meme specifically. I'm not just going to mm -hmm. remove it because you guys are making a big stink about it, which I don't know. That's his prerogative. I, I don't know. I but do you think, think? But do you think? But do you? But given the information that I that I mentioned before about the consequences of it and the fact that it is, uh, and and the fact that you identified it as dangerous rhetoric and that it's also mm -hmm. misinformation, um, yeah. and it's been used as misinformation, do you not think that there is actually a obligation for Daktar to actually confront um, these facts and that it? Yeah. It, and 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 to under and to understand that it, it it is, you know that if he's concerned or they if they are concerned with not participating in that, then they should want to take it down. Or if they don't want to take it down, then yeah. So I mean, then, if it then, was then, me, then they then they, sh then they should continue. Then they will have to just embrace the fact that they're going to continue to be called out for that. Right. So if it was me, and I had posted something that at the time made me chuckle, and then maybe I didn't necessarily like. Um, agree with it or whatever, but I just shared it thinking like, oh, isn't this whatever to my followers. Um, if it was me, I would have just removed it and said, hey, you know, sorry, whatever. But that's me. And mm -hmm. again, like, um, what do you I think this know, reflects I... about him, though? That, but what do you think this reflects about? Give, okay, so given that stuff, what do you think, given the in light of the information presented so far, what's going on, man? Uh, Manzo Dunbar? Um, sorry if I mispronounced that. Manu, Manu, <laughs> I'll call you Manu. Uh, I th thanks for joining I think in. That, but, 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 what do you think that reflects about them, given the yeah. information you understand thus far, and their resistance to wanting to take it down, given what you know now, or given what's well, been, given at least what we said? Right. So again, like I said, like I think this is one of the first things I said is that I I see both sides here, right? And I'm more inclined to agree politically, or uh, if we're talking about uh is like real issues policy or the the substance as as Kyle Klinsky would call it um uh yeah i mean what does it say about him uh knowing daktar actually knowing him having had conversations with him he he's really one to to just i think he's just sick of the over or the hypersensitivity when it comes to certain things so so I think it, it really boils down to he was I think he was being genuine when he said he was sharing it as a matter of censorship. I think that is true. But I also think that uh, he was inclined to share something like that because of his political beliefs. And, and he's probably in, you know, some form of an echo chamber. We all are when it comes to the algorithms and shit that that cater to our uh, uh, our social media and stuff. I think he's probably in some some echo chambers. He saw it 
it came it popped up in his feed because he's looking at other things that are similar or he's you know voicing support for Trump to one extent or another mm-hmm. and yeah obviously there's there is all of that and, and to a certain extent it's undeniable but that is his right to to, to and it's also people's right to call way, you know but it's also but it's also people's right to call them out for that and to I you guess. know, and to make an association, and and the thing is, it's only natural to make an association that if you support somebody who has a track record of racism, you know, no matter how not racist you may be as an individual, but then you keep mm. supporting, openly supporting somebody and spreading, you know, everything from memes and information and whatever yeah. else they share that's in the same vein and supports these ideology. It's like right. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how pl- nice and pleasant you are as an individual. You are supporting shit that is known to be dangerous. And concerning the echo right. chambers thing, and concerning the echoes chambers thing, again, it's, it's, we can't just always back up on this because the quote unquote echo chamber of astronomers, or excuse me, of, of, of NASA, you could say, or like Neil deGrasse Tyson is a different quote unquote echo chamber than the flat earthers, you know, or QAnon, these are, you know, you can call them echo chambers, like, oh, you're in the cult of science, you're in the, it's like, no, one of these groups is actually in, like, belongs to a cult of, like, of, of bad logic and, yeah. you know, saying irrationality and a lot of, yeah. you know, a lot of negative shit. So it's like, so, so to just say it's like, oh, we're all in an echo chamber, some, some, not, again, like, not all speech, not all speech is, is uh, uh, equal mm-hmm. and deserves equal platform. Not all, you know, echo chambers are created equally either. You know, it's all about the quality of, of that individual group. And people do that because they realize that there are certain differences which can't be and shouldn't be, um, you know, rectified. There's, there's no middle ground to meet with a, there's no middle ground to meet with, you know, a flat earther. You don't, you're not supposed to give those ideas any sort of ground, um, you know, which is why, you know, it's, which is why we, you know, people, we tend to persistently mock them and deride them because, we see that it's also gaining popularity, but it's also easy to to, to debunk and shit, right? Yeah. The reason the reason so why it's, I... the re- the reason why it's harder for people to do or or hesitant to do that shit with like the memes and stuff or being like, oh well, I talked to this person or I've hung out with them and everything, but it's like that's still just a limited set of circumstances. We don't really get to see all sides of people. You only get to see people in different situations in certain contexts, and so it's. Uh, you know, we, again, given the information and, and stuff that we've studied, we got about 17 minutes left on this one. It was going on Fatty Beaver. But, um, it, so let me, let me say something uh, real fast. Yeah. Uh, because, okay, I just wanted to touch on, you said that they have a right to call him out too. Now, obviously that is yeah. inherently, it's, it, that is inherently true. But again, it was the manner in which it happened that I felt was actually more harmful than the meme itself. And this is the point I'm trying to make is that, to throw him under the bus, call him racist. And I know I'm, I'm sounding like a broken record a little bit, but I'm mostly, I guess in a way, I'm trying to give context to people who are just joining us. Um, to, to do all of that and to not consider that he, he is a human being as well, that he has rights as well, that it's his fucking Instagram page. You don't have to like it. You don't have to agree with it. Just like he doesn't have to like it when you scrutinize him. But again, right? but, but again, just, Aaron, it's not. But it's not just about well, opinion. Wait, let me, let me finish. Speech. Let me, it's about the consequences of the shit. People have not. I mean, how that, many people, Okay, that's, how, how, this is what I wanted to say, though. This is what I wanted to yeah. say, right? Because we're talking, we're talking consequences. Where are they? What What are they exactly? Like, I mean, uh, it, I don't even think that should be the approach or or the mentality that that we approach this with. That there that there should be consequences per se. I mean. Again, but you said it was dangerous. I, but you said the but you said it expressed. You said you said it. I know, but if I had seen it, rhetoric. if I had seen it and been offended by it, you know, it could have been anything. It could have been a, another meme entirely. As a friend, I would have approached Actar and said, "Hey, man, you know, if you think about it, this is wrong for X, Y, Z reason. Um, would you maybe consider taking it down or whatever? You know, or or mm-hmm. you should consider that you might be offending other people and." I honestly think that Dactar would have been like, um, maybe not necessarily straight up, yeah, you're right, and then do that, but at mm-hmm. least be willing to hear you out and then weigh the options, right? Should I keep mm-hmm. it up? Should I take it down? That sort of thing. But he wasn't even right. given that opportunity. It was straight up, you are a racist. And, and that to me is just, is just wrong. 
Well, like I said before, I don't, you know, I, like I said, to me, just knowing that one meme, um, that's not it's enough to push sure. yeah, it on its own. But the thing is, is that like, there's other information there that I am not aware of. And so other people may have reasonably made the, uh, made the association that, oh, this dude, this wasn't just a one-off, that they consistently express support of these type of ideology and this type of information and that they, that they reinforce a very specific echo chamber. An echo chamber that reminds you is one that um, has been, part, been partly responsible for the rise in hate crimes against marginalized groups, including Asian people, as a result of being associated with the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And again, it being I it, it, hold, well, hold on, well, 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 no, well, 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 hold on. But the thing is, is that like you're saying, but <laughs> well, the thing is, on one hand, you're saying that, oh, what should the what should the consequences be? He shared a meme that had disinformation and dangerous rhetoric in it. To me, that is that that is that is that is it. That is it right there. You just you just said it. You know, saying like like I said before, I could grant you the absurdism of it from a particular angle, but the absurdism is overwhelmed. It's washed out by the presence of the, by, by how inflammatory the disinformation is. It isn't simply about being mis, it isn't simply about being offended because I'm not personally offended by it, but it's still, yeah. uh, but like you said, I still recognize it for what it is. And so, you know, I don't know if anybody has broke it down to him like that. I agree with you that it should be, you know, given to them, but at the same time, it's like, again, again you have to um, expect that anything you make, no matter how, small your audience usually is that anything can be you know blown up and be used um by somebody else and have these you know these mega threads and whatnot but it's like i think the real interesting thing is that how you said that even after after all this they still decided that they're not going to take it down and he, he privatized his page but it's like he, pri he privatized his page I, so the, so the thing so the thing why, is so i can see well, why but it's like at the same time mm -hmm. at the same time you know, are they is are they going to own up to recognizing why people were offended, why people recognize this as dangerous rhetoric? I was I would say that he did. I would say that he how so I, by apologizing a couple times. A couple times he said, you know, like I didn't mean to offend anybody. There was no ill intent. I apologize if it was offensive, and I know like. There's like well, it's a, one thing I'm to sorry apologize. If you were offended, blah blah blah. But but I mean, look, he didn't find it to be offensive. He doesn't find it to be offensive. So again, and that's on, again, that's again, him. it's not a, again, it's not the it's not about offensiveness because, like I said, I'm not offended, but it's about it being dangerous rhetoric and misinformation that has nothing to do with personal offense. See, okay, that has now, to do with you, keep, you keep saying misinformation. I want to I want to touch on that. So what? Yes. Why because do you think the whole misinformation? Because sharing a meme that is making light of, or that is calling the coronavirus the Kung Flu, besides it being on the dangerous rhetoric side of making this association with Asian people, um, the other thing about it is that it is making the implication that it was uh, brought over here by China. Um, mm -hmm. No, it was, no it, was, it was people of all backgrounds. It was mainly the wealthy because they're the ones that are allowed to, or able to travel and be jet setters mm -hmm. and everything. Um, okay. So the thing is to even so the thing is even in that respect it's like and people try to deflect and be like oh it's because it originated in China but we don't talk about we don't describe other diseases like that you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. the Spanish flu didn't even fucking originate in um, Spain I don't remember exactly why it was given that name but mm -hmm. um, but that's a, but that, I mean that's rare we don't usually call stuff that um, and it's for this very reason is because it can be made to have negative associations with entire demographics and so. Right. Um, so, so no, I, I feel very confident in saying that it is both d uh, dangerous rhetoric and misinformation because it does misrepresent. I, it does misrepresent mm -hmm. how it does. It misrepresents what it what imply what it implies is not actual science or vi vi uh, virology, and it also is not um, indicative of how the disease is, has really been spread. Sure. So um, yeah. I mean, I feel like we're kind of going in circles a little bit. I, I think we have some common ground on this issue. I obviously said that it was dangerous rhetoric and, and believe that, that it's essentially... Uh, so why shouldn't it come down then? Well, I'm not saying that it should or shouldn't. Um, but should it though? That's Because again, this is where like we go from identifying problems and, and where we find common ground and then to what is the actual repercussion. See, and, okay, so this is this is part of where I stand on this, is which is that I'm not in the left, business. So. Okay. 
I'm not in the business of, nor should genius be in the business of dictating what people post on their Instagram page. That's how I see it. Now, obviously there's, there's a certain, there are certain lines, right? And mm -hmm. you seem to have, have implied that you didn't think that he crossed the line of racism at least, or at least that we could um, without a doubt say, Hey, this guy's a racist. Right. right. And I, but I also want to point out, but I also want to point out, I'm not saying that um, I'm not saying that, you know, one platform should be telling another platform what they can and they can't, excuse me. Um, excuse me. I'm not, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, mm -hmm. Damn. Sorry. I'm saying I'm fucking <laughs> hard seltzer. Um, I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is that any business group or individual or, or whatever the fuck has the right to just like people have, you know, right to, you know, say shit and deal with those consequences. You're free to, people are free to associate or dissociate with whomever they want. And so yeah. if somebody discovers that, hey, that they share this kind of information and then once confronted on it, they, cause, cause an, an apology is different than understanding the problems. Because again, to me, this isn't about personal offense. This is about recognizing the actual harm that is gonna come down to certain groups of people as a result of spreading this shit. So this isn't just about oh, being offended and, and you know what I'm saying, needing a fainting couch or, or shit and smelling salts. This is about like, no, we've, <laughs> we've, we've, seen, we've seen that there is a logical progression of, of shit, of information being platformed and shared and then you know, other shit happening. We've seen it, it's, it's, you know, there's no question of that. And so while no, I'm not saying genius should be going over to IG and being like, hey, take your stuff down. I, I, to me, it's, it doesn't bother me that people are going out and pointing out and being like, Hey, this is the, this yeah, is what, no, this that, is, this is that, one of the people. And then, and then also mm -hmm. being like, if genius wants to dissociate with them, because as you said before, they're like 90% liberal or progressive or whatever the fuck. And maybe they're like, Hey, yeah, this is more conservatism or reactionaryism than we want present, you know, saying here. And, and to me, it's their right to do that. I mean, to me, again, this is, you know, again, to me, this is just the, um, you know, to me, that's, that's, uh, uh, I mean, yeah, to me, that's, that's, I mean, to me, that's an acceptable response, you know what I'm saying, on both those ends. I mean, that's, you know, that's the game, you know, because the whole idea of being canceled um, is just that. You boycott, you dissociate, or you try to um, make your opposition, whomever they may be, obsolete or irrelevant. You know what I'm saying? And that's just been, and that's just life. You know what I'm saying? That's just the competition. You can say the marketplace of ideas, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. um, okay. One gets, you know, some ideas get ate up unless you're big enough to defend yourself. Um, so I, I do want to make clear that, again, mm -hmm. my main point is that Daktar is not racist. The rest of it, I could take or leave. Um, the scrutiny, the points that were being made, there were some very valid points being made uh, on, on both sides. And, and in terms of damage control that, or, or, you know, being considerate of other people, other cultures and, and other users, I think mm -hmm. that there were some great points being made by people who took offense to the meme or found it to be offensive. Um, mm -hmm. But to outright call Daktar racist and to not give him the chance to, to, uh, uh, to make amends or to, for like some form of restitution, I suppose, you know, well, and if he had the chance the to apologize, I mean, the th well, the thing is, it sounds like he has had a chance to apologize, and what he has had yeah. saying response is that is that yeah, while he did apologize for the um, any offense that people have taken, it doesn't seem that he's recognized what the actual um, why people were really upset. Um, I don't know actually. It, I actually didn't read all of his comments after the first like couple of comments that he had left. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think it's fair for either of us to jump to that conclusion since neither of us read it. However, I do know for a fact that- Well, I'm just going off of what you, I'm just going off of what, well, I'm just going off of what you said. Right. And, and, and again- And I, and again, I know the way that um, I worded it was like, I'm sorry if I offended you or whatever. But like, um, mm -hmm. you know, I still think that that's, that's um, even though he didn't say, I'm sorry that I shared something that was offensive and I'm, and I understand, uh, he may not have said, um, or maybe he did. Again, I don't. I really don't remember. I still think it's it's relevant and and it's it's um, uh, commendable that he multiple times said that I am sorry that that I offended people. You know, like that. I don't know. I, I think that's that's worth noting or that it's it's notable. 
Um, right, I got but, you. I heard that. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying that there's more, you know, yeah, um, to me, I'm just saying that that's one facet of it. And just like I mentioned before, with the absurdism being outweighed by the dangerous rhetoric and the misinformation, in this case, it's like an apology isn't just about saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that you're offended. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's about recognizing. Uh, you, you keep it's, saying it's, misinformation, it's, and I just don't see it that way. It's like, it, at the end of the day. Well, we, it's well, we only got four minutes left, and I, but, okay, I, okay. but, I, but, I, but I, but I did explain why, because, and I thought you said that you agreed with it, that it is making a broad association with um, the coronavirus and how it has traveled, basically implying that Asian people, and specifically Chinese, have brought it over when it was actually mostly spread by um, the wealthy who, 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 um, I guess, but I don't uh, travel was, and shit. Yeah, no, I mean, that's I the fact, I mean, that's the fact. It's not, it's not, it's no, I mean, that's actually how it's, how it happened. It wasn't just like, Oh, a bunch of Asian people here um, just all of a sudden brought it. It was coming from, because people travel all across the world, especially those who have yeah. money. But, but, the, but the thing is to get well, back to the, to the point is that, um, so I, I do, was so again, so, so again, I, I stick by attempting to be informative. So to say that, but it if was, it's missed, but if it's missed, but if it's missing, it doesn't, well, the thing is, it doesn't matter what, what their intent is. It's about the content of the actual thing. If the content contains misinformation and isn't being critiqued or challenged, th then it's fair in my mind for, um, for, for people to, to point that out and to, and to point out that critique. Well, and if the people, and, and if the people, and here's the, and here's the thing, if somebody is, and if and the thing is, is that like it's not like he's been canceled from life and everything. It's not like he's been, you know, um, you know, had somebody come to his car break into or he's coming to his like home and shit or like <laughs> yeah. or target him at you know, places like no, they're making his life uncomfortable because the implications of his shit of the shit that he's spreading has resulted in deaths and hate crimes and you know discrimination and and just the you know increase in violence and shit in that respect. So and these are and these mm -hmm. are facts. These aren't you know to me and this I, isn't things. That, these are hold on these these are. They, but the thing is, okay, so the thing is, is that like with that respect then to then say, well, I think it's commendable if he apologize and then I'm not sure if, you know, he should take it down or not. To me, it's like, no, the answer is clear. He should be able to say if he's not, if they're not, you know what I'm saying, uh, what people are claiming them as, then it should be very easy to be like, I don't agree with this, that I understand that this was spreading. But not just apologizing, right but saying. To tell him that? Who has the right everybody, to tell him that? Everybody, everybody. Everybody. No, no, no. Who has the right to enforce that? Nobody. Well, no. Social media platforms, they can, well, any, well, the thing is, all of these groups, Genius, Instagram, they can platform whomever they want. And if people make enough adequate noise and to the point where they feel like it's, it's um, destructive, it's a liability to keep us, we got two minutes left, to keep associating with certain individuals, then it's their right to enforce. And if people, and if people want to make posts about this and make a thousand posts about it a day, that's their freedom to do that. And I don't see anything yeah. wrong with that. So again, free speech is a two-way street. So we agree there that they, these other so people- So association. Like, yeah, so, but, but in terms of um, having him take it down and, 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 and like I said, enforcing it, um, mm -hmm. who has the right to enforce it? I guess the, or the, the answer to that would be Instagram, right? If Instagram as a company any, so, yeah. wanted to, to um, for whatever reason, really dive into that, but they're really not yeah, in the 60 seconds doing left. That. So okay, no, they, we well, to, no, they, do we want well, no, to they, go to round three? Do we want to I go can. to round three? I, I let's can. go to round it, three and let's, okay. let's kind of like veer into something else a little bit, because I think we've beat this dead horse, like to, to a pulp, but well, um, no, well, no, well, I no, want to reiterate what, what, before we go to round three, that we fundamentally <laughs> agree. We fundamentally agree on, on most of these things. The disconnect comes in calling Dactar racist, how we, enforce consequences and that sort of thing mm -hmm. and, and 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 giving him a chance to actually learn from the situation and to actually receive the information and, yeah. and, and grow change like that's that's how i see it right um to me it's it's um yeah we're going <laughs> in for, yeah she's laughing <laughs> uh part three coming on of yeah we got about 10 seconds um, All right, part three. Yeah, so I'm going to go to the end of this and we'll get to it. And uh, <laughs> yeah.